Welcome, it's Jennifer McGuire. I hope your week is off to a good start. I don't know if you remember when you were a kid and you would play with art stuff or craft supplies and just have fun. No pressure, just carefree fun. Well, today's technique is one that I remember doing as a kid and I was so excited to do this again today and to do it with Lila. So wanted to share it with you. It is a tissue paper watercolor technique. Now before we get creating, I did want to share with you a stamp set that is very important. This is the one day at a time stamp set from Reverse Confetti. It's new today and the proceeds from the stamp set go to the Pink Fund. The Pink Fund is an organization that helps give financial dis financial support to families of women who are battling breast cancer. It's a great organization and I'm really proud of Jen from Reverse Confetti for making this possible. So I'll be using this stamp set later in the video. I wanted to mention it first because it's so important. Okay, so let's start creating like we did when we were kids. I remember doing this technique many years ago with regular tissue paper that we bought at the store. I don't think many tissue papers bought at the store for wrapping gifts works for this technique anymore, but you definitely can try. The tissue paper that I'm using today is from Vicki Booten. It's a new product line from American Crafts, and this reacts with water, so it's a reactive tissue paper. And look at all the beautiful colors. There are many sheets in the pack, large sheets, so you have a lot in this package to create with. I use very little of it today. What I did is I cut some sheets together. You can see it's layered up maybe six pieces here, and I'm die cutting a bunch of different die cuts from it. That big triangle is from Reverse Confetti. It's a really fun tall triangles die set. And then I'm also doing some hearts and circles. And I'm going to take all of these tissue paper pieces and put them in a bowl so that I can keep them all organized until it's time to create. Because these are thin, I don't want to lose them on my work surface. So check out all the beautiful colors. Again, this is a tissue paper that is meant to react or bleed with water. Okay, so now that I have a bunch of pieces cut, it's time to play. Little Lila wanted to play along today, so she's gonna help me. The card she made here is on the left, and I did the one on the right. I like hers better, but hey, what, what do you do? So um, I have a cutting board here, and I'm just going to tape onto the cutting board some white watercolor paper. I'm using Tim Holtz watercolor paper. I like it because it's bright white. I'm using painter's tape to hold the edge down. You could just do this on your work surface. I like using the cutting board because it holds it flat and I can move it out of the way. So you can see little Lila here is covering this with water. You wanna be pretty generous. Get a nice sheen across your watercolor paper and then you just start dropping these little tissue paper circles wherever you want. Now I think the reason Lila's turned out so good is because she just put them wherever she wanted. She allowed colors to overlap, she didn't think about it. And I think that's where the fun happens. Now if you put down a tissue paper circle and it looks a little dry, then it's probably not making much contact with the wet paper. So that's why I'm spritzing a little bit more on top. The more water you use, the more bleeding and blending you get going on. The less water you use, the more clean and kind of uh, sketchy results you'll get. So you'll see Lila's adding some water here and there also. Now once you're done, you can set it aside and let it dry, which gives you more intense color, but we're impatient, so we're using a heat gun. And I just apply heat to it, and you'll see all the tissue paper pieces start flying off. And before you know it, you're left with this really fun background. So this is Lila's, she loved it, and I think it's beautiful too. So that's one way that you can use this reactive tissue paper. Okay, so here is my example on the right. For mine, I was very certain to press the circles into the water. I pushed each one down so they made complete contact, and that's how I get more solid images, but I will say I do like hers better. So Lila did one more, the example that you see here. For this one, she did pink, yellow, and orange circles. Then she dried it and then did more on top. So that's how she got that layered look and we used a lot of water on this one. So you can really have fun with these and mix different colors. We also stamped some hearts over it when we were done. Okay, I wanted to show you another example with these really graphic triangles. I thought it was fun with this kind of crazy watercolor technique. Remember, you could die cut, punch, cut or tear any shapes that you want. 
So I have watercolor paper. I've covered it with the sheen of water. This time I kind of used a brush to smooth it out and try to get as even as I can. And now I'm just laying down these tissue paper triangles. This I showed you earlier in the video. I cut with a new reverse confetti tall triangles die set. I just think it's such a cool set. And I'm just using the blue, the green, and the dark blue tissue papers for this. Now I'm kind of spraying as I go, just so I can get some bleeding and some cool effects going on. And as I heat it, check it out, the tissue paper just peels back and you get that really cool result. So at the end of this video, I'll show you how I pulled these into cards, but I just wanted to show you some of the different looks that you can get from this technique. I will say like these dies are fun to work with because they're so graphic looking, yet we gave it kind of a playful look by using the watercolor technique. Now my favorite of all of the techniques that I did today was this rainbow background and it was definitely the easiest to do. All I did is I cut a bunch of random strips of the tissue paper, all different widths. Some of them are perfect, some of them are not. You could even tear it if you wanted to. And then I'm laying them down, overlapping them onto the wet watercolor paper. I'm not making any effort to make sure this is perfect. I layer a lot up. I like to double layer yellow because it's such a light color. It makes it a little more vibrant. I do add water over this because I really want some fun you know, like movement of color to happen here. Now I am pressing this down with my brush. You don't have to do this, but that was making sure that I had contact with all the color against the background. Now you'll notice there on the bottom, I didn't have contact, which is you know cool if you wanna leave it that way, but I wanted to show you that you can layer on top of this also. Now the techniques I'm doing today are very basic. There's nothing fancy that I'm doing here. There are some really cool techniques where you can layer colors and crumble the tissue paper. The sky is the limit with this product. Now for this example, I wanted to show you can also get a clean look with this tissue paper. So for this one, I wanted to do some soft pink hearts that were kind of scattered along a background. So I've wet the watercolor paper and I'm going to drop the little hearts in place here and there. You can tell I'm putting a lot more thought into it than I did with the other examples, but I wanted to show you, you can get a very clean look if you wanted to. So I'm just gonna place these onto the background, kind of evenly spaced. I will say that if you're taking this much time to place the tissue down, you want to make sure that you re-wet the paper here and there, just so that you can still have that reaction going on. When I was done, I kind of sprayed the whole thing a bit more. If you let this sit, you'll get a more intense color. I'm impatient, so I didn't let it sit. I went ahead and heat set it and kind of blew all the tissue paper off. If you want to make sure that these react perfectly in perfect little hearts, you do want to make sure that each tissue paper is in contact. But I didn't do that because I really kind of wanted to have that fun, imperfect feel to it, even though the hearts are perfectly placed. So there we can get a more clean look from this reactive tissue paper. By the way, this tissue paper, I mean, that pack goes a long way and the price is pretty good. And this is the perfect project to do with kids this summer when you know we're always looking for things for them to do. Okay, so now I wanted to show you how I pulled these things together and some of the fun little doodads that I added. For this example here, I stamped the sentiment from the new reverse confetti one day at a time stamp set. This is the one that I showed you at the beginning that supports the pink fund. So I'm putting this in my Misty. You don't have to use the Misty. I just did because I knew I would mess it up if I didn't. So I'm stamping this with black VersaFine ink and then I will clear heat emboss it. Now, if I did this card again, I would have the triangles going in the opposite direction so that the sentiment tilted up instead of down but hey, this is what I did, so I'm just going with it. And now I'm adding double-sided tape to a piece of white craft foam. This is going to allow me to stick this to the back of the little panel that we created, and it'll give it nice, even raised dimension that will hold up nicely when we send this through the mail. So these cards are four and a quarter by five and a half in the end. I went ahead and black or white heat embossed a sentiment on each of these backgrounds that we created. I wanted to keep it very simple, but I did want to add a little bit of sparkle to each, so I thought I'd show you some of the details that I added on some of the cards. For this rainbow example, I put some sequins along the card, along with these fun Queen and Company bright pearlies at the center of each of them. So I'm using Ranger Multimedium in the matte finish. That's a super strong adhesive. 
and I'm adding these little pearlies. Now these are new and they come in a pack with a bunch of colors. You can see some of them there to the right. And I just thought they would be fun in the center of the sequins. And in the larger sequins, I did a cluster of three of them. And it really adds a lot of shine and interest to this simple card. You could even add little gemstones or little seed beads to the center of the sequins if you wanted to instead. And there you can get a closer look at what these look like. Now for the pink heart card, I added a little heart die cut accent to the center there. And you see the center where there's a little pink flower accent? Now that is from another new Queen & Company set of toppings. These are little hearts in different colors or little stars. They all come in a pack together. I'm showing you some of the options here on the right. Now these, I'll tell you, they're hard to find. They're sold out everywhere, but I promise there are more coming to stores soon. They really are so much fun. You can see some of the options there. So I'll link to them if you want to check them out. Now here are all the cards that I created. Here is the one that Lila did. We did the Hello Beautiful Sentiment, added some sequ sequins with gemstones in the center. For this one, we just added some little tiny hearts with stamping and didn't put any accents on it. We wanted to keep it pretty simple. Then we have our pink heart one with those little heart toppings that I showed you from Queen & Company. I did also add some little white gel pen dots to the hearts just to kind of make them pop a little bit more. For the triangle card, I added some sequins, gems, and little stars, just to add a little bit of interest. Then we have the circle card that I created to try to be like Lila, but it didn't turn out as good as hers. On this one, I added some gumdrops from Your Next Stamp and kept the rest of it very simple. And then finally, probably my favorite background of all, the rainbow one done with the stripes. And we have the sequins with the little pearls in the center. I really hope you'll give this technique a try. It is so much fun to do. If you're interested in the products, they're linked below in my YouTube description, but be sure to go to my blog. There's a lot more there. In the middle are other videos that might be of interest to you and hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great week and we'll see you soon.